let's start with the game that really caught our attention that probably isn't going to be coming in 2024, uh, Death Stranding 2 from uh, Kojima Productions. Um, I'm going to kick this off with a wow, but I'm interested in your opinions on this one, John, because it's pretty stellar stuff. Oh, I think my opinions are pretty well known at this point. Uh, yeah, it was a, it was an excellent trailer. And I got to say, like, kudos to Kojima Productions for finding a way to produce a first party published game on both PlayStation and Xbox. That That is an impressive accomplishment. And hopefully people will enjoy both games as a result. But this was uh this one's interesting for beyond the so first of all there's the game itself the concept the visuals the storytelling uh, i was a big fan of the original uh, i've gone over that many times as to why it's a very curious strange game but it did a lot of interesting things for like open world design trying to change it from focus on the hitting your waypoints and just reaching those points and actually putting uh an emphasis on the traversal part and planning uh but you know, that story was weird. It wrapped up, but it kind of came together in the end, I would say. But this this trailer then comes along and you're just like, what is even happening? And that's what I admit. That is one of the things I've always enjoyed about Kojima produce, uh, produced games is that he is kind of a showman with how he presents these things. I mean, that goes back, I think, to Metal Gear Solid 2. Yeah. Uh, which, by the way, there's a shot early in that when they're inside that little facility with that very cool image of uh, the two characters sort of presented in a monochromatic fashion, where some of those those scenes reminded me of the tanker in MGS2, and it was cool to see it kind of done in really high high definition. Uh, but so the main thing here is that this is our first real look at, I would argue, current gen only Decima right yeah because uh horizon forbidden west was a cross-platform game mm -hmm. obviously the dlc was ps5 only but it's still based on a cross-generation game this this game is clearly being made specifically for this new generation and likely the ps4 sorry the ps5 professional as well mm -hmm. which we presume to exist we'll see <laughs> uh but the quality of everything on display, both in terms of the artistry and the actual technical makeup, was really, truly outstanding. Uh, the character rendering, still phenomenal, as it was before. Including one of my new favorite things, as many others, is the low frame rate puppet that simulates stop motion animation. Which was simply delightful and very, very unexpected. Uh, and that kind of ties back into where I was going before with like, that's the thing about Kojima games is like, it's like this, they present something to you this vision of something with a lot of different visuals and concepts and ideas that on the surface don't make any sense. And it actually creates a sense of mystery and you want to learn more and see more of what's here. And I think they do a really surprisingly great job in this trailer in a way that reminded me of watching trailers at E3 during the early 2000s rather than the more commercialized, cinematic, CG-fied style stuff that is co common these days, where it's this perfect blend of, of tantalizing story segments with a lot of gameplay shots showing various environments that you'll explore. And man, those environments, the, the sheer level of variety on display here compared to the original game is pretty staggering, I think. Uh, I mean, what do you think, Oliver? I mean, one thing that we should really talk about, actually, I'm just seeing it now, is the, the fluid simulation stuff. That's actually one of my favorite things about it and what really elevates this. There's that part where he's running through sort of a dry riverbed and you actually see the water sort of chasing him through it and knocking down bridges along the way. And just that sort of interaction. We saw stuff like this with the tar in the first one. Uh, I think that's really cool. And it's the kind of stuff you don't see often in games where it's beyond just the visuals. It's more about how those visuals interact with the world. Yeah, I think the fluid looks really cool. And I mean, I've been playing through Death Stranding just recently for uh, an upcoming piece right. should be on the, on the iPhone. And it is reminiscent. You, you are reminded a little bit of the stuff with the tar, but here it does look quite a bit better. Um, and there's some like interesting stuff, like there's some pre-calculated destruction in the trailer that I thought looked really good as well. Um, just in terms of the technique, so I did scan through the trailer looking for evidence, telltale tell, tell, tell signs of a couple things. 
So the reflections do seem to be screen space reflections. Mm -hmm. um, at, at 340, Sam is running across, and there don't seem to be occlusion issues. But then at 439, in that kind of like the boardroom area, if you look at the, the standalone trailer, um, it almost looks like Sam has a bit of a screen space reflection skirt to him, where the occluded details like a this dark space behind him. And then at 502, there are obvious SSR occlusion issues at the sides of the frame. That's that's one detail um, that, that indicate they're probably screen space reflections. And the shadows, they do look very pristine and very clean throughout, but I did see some shadow aliasing at 655 on the enemy's shoulder a little bit, and then at 140 there appears to be some shadow aliasing along Sam's back. So that would sort of indicate some kind of rasterized technique. Although in some scenes I did note like a little bit, almost what looked like a little bit of contact hardening around the shadows. So maybe there's a mix of different things in there that they're doing. Um, and then I also noticed it, at 309, when the pod bay door is open, I'm not sure if you noticed this, John, but there's light that's being reflected off of the pod bay door as it opens. And it really does fill that space with reflected light. And it does look yes. like some kind of potentially real-time or ray-traced global illumination technique. That's what really screamed out to me. And then also the lighting throughout the trailer is very consistent looking. And at 4.38 as well, when the lights are coming on, it does remind me a lot of what I would expect from a title with ray traced global illumination. So I am wondering if maybe that's part of the feature set of current generation Decima, as you put it, if that's part of the fundamental feature set that we're going to see in presumably the next Horizon game and this title, because the lighting presentation really did remind me of what I typically see and expect from a title with a ray traced uh, global illumination technique. Absolutely. And I think that pod bay door that slowly opens and the light sort of spills into the room. We've not seen any lighting like that in a Decima title before. The indirectly lit or directly lit areas when they combine like this, like there is some pretty impressive indirect lighting in Horizon Forbidden West that's pre-calculated, but it's not dynamic in this way. And this is exactly the kind of scene where you could show it off. It has a very soft uh, fall off of like sort of the the ambient shadowing around the edges of that door off to the left and right. And just the way the, the light naturally spills in. It's either a very, very accomplished and impressive rasterized solution, or maybe they are actually leveraging ray traced global illumination. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, Decima's engineering work has continued. Uh, it would make sense to invest in technologies like this. And given that we're seeing RT like GI, it, it kind of jives the fact that we're not seeing reflections or shadows or anything like that with ray tracing, because layering on too many of those effects would be likely prohibitively expensive, shall we say. Okay, yeah, I think RT GI would be a absolutely brilliant upgrade to the existing Decima engine. Um, it just makes sense with that kind of game, right? And um, the sort of trade-offs that you get with the existing sort of uh, solutions we have, you know, there's this kind of, um, how can you describe it? There's an accumulation effect on RT GI. It wouldn't be that impactful on this type of game, whereas you look at something like Marvel Spider-Man, it would be a lot more difficult to integrate without looking a bit poor. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that makes sense. And um, just, you know, what could I say? Uh, it, it just seemed like a maximum upgrade in just about every regard. Character rendering again, next level. Um, obviously, the the amount of variety that we saw in the environments was, was pretty stellar. Lighting, just superb. Uh, I don't really know. I mean, you can heap on the superlatives on this, but this is the first uh, sort of um, proper sort of current gen uh, thing that we've seen from Kojima and it's it's just looking brilliant what can I say um not sure what's going on with those hands <laughs> on Fragile's face oh yeah yeah there's a lot of I weird mean, stuff in here I mean yeah, this, exactly. this is the thing that I kind of enjoy about I mean I'm not a Kojima fan at all I really don't like his sort <laughs> of narrative don't. uh <laughs> stylings <laughs> but there's a lot of weird stuff in here and um this is the thing that I kind of like about this presentation first of all it wasn't rushed they basically just said to Kojima, by the look of it, here's 10 minutes, <laughs> do whatever you like with it. Secondly, Kojima himself edits the trailers, right? Um, and I believe as far as I end, know, yeah. I think at the end of this one, it says edited by Hideo Kojima, which kind of suggests that that refers to the trailer. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you know, this is basically a creator in complete control of the vision, teasing what he wants to be teased at this point. And... Um, you can certainly say that it's highly intriguing and visually astonishing. And um, I think 
I read somewhere that we're looking at a 2025 time so release said, yeah. window. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which in the trailer. disappointing, but you know, basically these things take time, right? <laughs> I mean, I would say that's sooner than I expected to be honest. That's a pretty good thing. Uh, what I'm more curious about is like, presumably if the PS5 professional is indeed real, uh, what, what that will mean because this trailer is presented at 30 frames per second. Yeah. And while that was true of horizon forbidden West as well, it did end up with a performance mode. I'll be curious to see if they're able to do 60 FPS on the original PS five, or if that's going to be something where like they can do a PS five pro mode at 60 as as well, perhaps. Hmm. I don't know though in this so games like this like really the, these stupidly good looking games uh this also applies to something like hellblade 2 where these are slow games they are not designed to be like action-packed ultra responsive experiences and i think as a result especially with the both of their cinematic aspirations i think 30 frames per second is actually just fine and it looks good actually i would argue but it is nice it would be nice to have the option for 60. Right. So, so do you think conceivably 60 frames per second could be a professional bonus as I, it were? I mean it seems like it could be uh I I mean I would genuinely be surprised if they tried to hit 60 with these visuals on a regular PS5. Mm. I mean Kojima likes 60 frames per second games. I think the, the one thing that came out when we talked to them for Death Stranding on PC uh it, it, we got this astonishing quote where um uh, we were told by that Kojima was actually targeting 60 on the original Death Stranding, but just couldn't do it on the PlayStation 4. So, Interesting. yeah, that would kind of make sense for a PS5 Pro to actually have a 60 mode. But, you know, who knows? I mean, um, what Decima achieved on the standard PlayStation 5 in Horizons performance yeah. mode is, is, is quite Absolutely. special, I think. Yeah. Um, anything more to talk specifically about this? Because we did have that extra bonus chat at the end. Um, where oh, right. his new where they game revealed. Was revealed. Yeah, well, if you, I assume it's probably still in the conceptual stages. Yeah, but it basically, to me, knowing how long games take to make, and knowing Kojima's age, uh, I'm to me, it feels like he just announced like his final project ever. Really? Right? Like, well, he did say it was the culmination of forty years' work, didn't he? What I mean is like it's probably going to take a long time to create and it's probably something that will extend beyond. Maybe he'll even work on like a sequel or two for it, but I feel like he's heading in the direction of whatever that IP is, is going to be sort of like everything that his career, like the culmination of his career, as he says, will finalize there. And then I suspect after that, we'll, we might see him retire. I don't know. Hmm, interesting. Uh, I, you know, I mean, that seems plausible to me at this point. Well, and that's actually kind of a, that's the weird, oh man, modern game development with the amount of time, the number of years it takes to make stuff. You start to think about games in terms of, well, this creator has only X number of games left in them until they retire. Right. And for us as well, like game releases used to come fast and furious and now they take five and six years a piece. Right. So like we're starting to, we're all running out of time. And like the medium, it's not even, it's, it's more about will we actually, what will we be able to experience while we're still alive at this point is I, I've been thinking about that stuff lately. Like we're just careening towards this point where games are taking so long, like not the most important thing in life, but it's something you enjoy. And it's like, I'm actually thinking about the end here. Like what is wow. going to be the last I, games I no that we idea. see developed and released. I had no idea that this would bring on an <laughs> existential crisis for you, John. <laughs> it does when you the fact that he mentioned the way he phrased that like is like the combination of everything and you just consider a lot of these developers and obviously these teams can live on without these guys right they're obviously he plays a big role in it but i think there's more to it than that there's a whole team driving it but a lot of the big names that we know in games they're not getting younger well it does and, seem that he's going back to the beginning right and um yeah uh, well, yeah, yeah. The espionage. Metal Gear. Yeah, the espionage genre. Uh, yeah. Thoughts on this one, Oliver? It sounds a lot like Metal Gear without the Metal Gear IP <laughs> to me. 
And maybe that's, yeah, that's a reflection of where he wants to go with the project, basically just do something that obviously he's extremely well known for, but in a, in a context that he can build a new story out and maybe do something interesting with it. And it's also like you get the nice transmedia elements there, which is a classic Kojima thing. Like maybe it's more of a film than a game. And we'll yeah, the transmedia that, stuff, right? Yeah, that's but, the way yeah, I felt I mean, about Metal Gear Solid 2. To yeah, be honest, he, but, uh, Rich. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 I would expect this time probably he'll throw in like some big actors. So yeah, I mean I think it's interesting. He's also sixty years old, uh, so he is he's getting on a bit, and this might be, you know, I think this might be like Death Stranding two. Then move on to this new project. Maybe it sounds kind of like from the way they framed it that maybe Death Stranding two is the final I, title. In I this suspect series. it will be. Um, what do you make of the then, kind of final pan? That yeah, revealed then this, this is it. Scient. There was no actual pronunciation given. So, and then the Columbia Studios thing as well. I mean, there is the sense that maybe they were very, very enigmatic in the in the interview piece where you know, um, they were basically talking about the game in very, very uh, weird terms. And, you know, it was a lot of sort of uh, watch this space style stylings to it. But yeah, I mean, we got this pan back to Columbia Studios. There, there did seem to be this kind of sense that, you know, okay, Sony is basically going to be throwing all of its sort of um, various media IPs at Kojima to play with here, which I find quite interesting. It's probably what he's always wanted. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think so. <laughs> 